Rick, you can understand where Republicans are coming from. Every time they push back on the president, and, and from Charlottesville to the Access Hollywood tape, most significantly, uh, they've been proven wrong in terms of voters. Voters will still go out and vote for Donald Trump. Do you think, though, it's still a good idea to put polls and to put voters, uh, not voters, but to put ha oh, um, uh, votes, excuse me, over a national security issue like the one we saw on Monday? Well, they do so at their peril, but, you know, they, these are guys who largely put their honor in escrow a long time ago when it comes to Donald Trump. He is not going to ever be a better candidate or a better president. He's always going to do these things to them. They're going to keep touching the hot stove time and time again. And what we've seen so far in all the special elections in 17 and 18 is that the Donald Trump touch has not helped people like, uh, you know, Ed Gillespie in Virginia um, or, or Rick Saccone in Pennsylvania. The, the, the damage Trump does to Republicans lasts a long time, and even if they try to you know, issue a pathetic statement on Twitter or what have you, or one of those, I wish he wouldn't have said that constructs, they are still hurt by it. It still lingers on, and it's just going to continue. And in this case, it's one more thing where they, they heard him walk it back yesterday. They breathed a sigh of relief and said, oh, let's get back to the important things like Peter Strzok's emails. Um, and, 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 of course, they're going to play this game over and over again until they fall off the edge of the cliff. Rick, you have an op-ed that says it's time for Republicans in the House and Senate to, to finally hold Trump to account. There's also this editorial in the New York Times. Those Republicans looking for a pretext to avoid confronting a president of their own party, those accustomed to behaving like whipped dogs, may try to dodge behind Mr. Trump's clumsy attempt on Tuesday to weasel out of his most egregious comments. But those who are serious about defending American democracy and undoing the damage of Mr. Trump's global globally televised submissiveness have the power to take action. What should they do in order to push back, Rick? Look, they, I laid out in the New York Daily News today a very simple three or four step process, and they need to confront Donald Trump um, uh, directly on this by, by doing what their job is, which is to pass legislation to improve our election security, to improve our cybersecurity, to pass hard sanctions against Russian oligarchs to take us out of the SWIFT system with Russia, the, the banking system with Russia, so that it punishes Russia directly. They need to lay these things out as a legislative uh, accomplishment, so he has to either veto it or accept it. They are a co-equal branch of government, and they refuse to act that way. Frankly, I think they should censure Donald Trump. Look, the, set the impeachment thing aside. It's a very high hill to climb. But they should censure Donald Trump for his behavior in, 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 during this European disaster tour because, you know, he, he acted like, 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 a, like a whip dog for Vladimir Putin the entire time. And, and they need to basically send him a message at some point. Now, will they do this? Of course not. They are completely terrified of him, you know, and Paul Ryan has abdicated every single bit of responsibility as a leader of the House. He's letting Devin Nunez and that clown show run wild in their, in their pro-Russia defenses of Trump. And, you know, so I, I think what I laid out was one more of these markers in the road that says, you guys have a way to fix this. You have a pathway to fix this. But if you choose not to, you know, so it, it's on your heads. Democrats want even, even more than that. Democrats want to see Donald Trump's tax returns. Yeah, and, and that not honestly, only that. I, uh, uh, Mark Sanford, Southern uh, South Carolina uh, Republican, mm -hmm. wants to see Trump's tax returns. It is amazing how much a Republican is capable of once they decide they're not going to run for re-election. It is just the <laughs> saddest thing to watch these guys um, find their voice in their spine the second they don't have to stand up. I, I, one, I don't think that wanting tax returns should be above and beyond whatever else we're discussing. That should be the very, very baseline. And I'm hopeful. <laughs> that we're seeing exactly how important it is to have that kind of information when we're vetting a presidential candidate because things can get quite awful if we don't know what's in there. Um, secondarily, I, I read what Rick's op-ed. I agreed with it 100%. Did I, you ever think you'd be saying that out Honestly, no. <laughs> and I've liked Rick a long time. But, but no, I thought it was incredibly smart the way he laid it out. And I thought one of the, one of the key points was taking Devin Nunes and the show trials out of the house. Like, we need to stop 
doing that. I understand why House Republicans are behaving the way they do. That is really where the Republican Party is a slave to this base, just as you were talking about at the start of this segment. That's been going back for a decade. There's really nothing they can do now. They have so gerrymandered these districts that only the reddest of the red will even vote in them. They are not able to make a case to the more moderates. They're not able to reach across the aisle and maintain support in their district because their district isn't built that way. They did it to themselves, but that's what they're stuck in right now. Where I'm at a complete loss is what the Senate is doing. These are people who have to stand before entire states. And you can't find an entire state of people who believe that Donald Trump is correct, that Russia's done nothing wrong, and in fact we should let them into right. our intelligence process, hand over the keys, and see what they come up with. So the fact that the senators are the ones who really could be stopping this, and they have decided not to, it seems politically short-sighted, and, and in the long term, it seems incredibly detrimental to our democracy. So I, I don't know what's going on in their minds right Mitch now. Mitch McConnell didn't name the president yesterday. He just said, I think the Russians need to know that there are a lot of the, us who fully understand what happened in 2016, and it really better not happen again in 2018. Well, Putin will really, really listen to that. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.